So guys, I really hate to do this, but I've been thinking about it. I've had enough and I am no longer going to be reviewing laptops, period. Ever, ever again on this channel in 2021, okay? But I am ending off the year with a really cool product from a company called Tuxedo. They're based in Germany. And the cool thing about these guys is they only create hardware products or computers or desktops and laptops specific for Linux users. Now this is their Infinity Book Pro 14 and it comes pre-installed with Ubuntu. They also pre-install Kubuntu if you ask, but you can install Windows too. And they put Windows on this so I can do all my performance tests. The kicker about this guy is that it's a beautiful product. It's very light, it's minimal, it's, it's easy to carry. It comes in this magnesium alloy chassis. In fact, I've actually seen this chassis before. If you don't remember, not too long ago, I reviewed the XPG Xenia 14 and it also uses the exact same chassis. Like everything from the ports to the design is exactly the same. They're sharing a similar Clevo build, but it's a good one because the port situation is very versatile. Like on the left-hand side, you have your connection or lock, then you have your USB Type-C port, which is Thunderbolt 4. You have a USB port, SD card slot, headphone jack, and then you flip it on the right-hand side, you have that HDMI port, another USB port, your barrel connector to charge it, and then another USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port, which you can use to charge this laptop. So you don't even need to carry the barrel connector around with you. Now I will say this, this style of laptop is pretty secure, not squishy in the middle, there's not a lot of lid flex, but I do find that it does scratch very easily. This, this holds true for the XP Xenia or XPG Xenia as well. So be very careful when you buy this, maybe put some sort of protection over it because just over regular use, I'm finding the laptop to scratch a little bit too easily. Now, if you buy this, you can spec it with the i7 U-series processor from Intel or you can use their H-series four core processors, which I have inside here, and you can spec it with an RTX 3050 Ti. The price ranges around 1200 euros all the way up to 2000 euros, depending on how powerful you want the laptop to be. Now, of course, you can open it up with one hand and you're presented by this massive glass touchpad. It's very accurate to use when you're using in Windows, but I did find it to be a little bit wonky in Linux. The drivers are just not as good, so it's not as smooth to use if you're using Linux on this, but it's a big touchpad. It will get a lot of grease because it shows since it's using a black color, but you do have a little dot up here and this lights up when you tap on it. And what that does is, is it disables your cursor from being used. So if I double tap it on again, it's gonna go away and then the cursor is enabled again. This is kind of good if you're using like, I don't know, uh, your own mouse on the left-hand side and you're typing on the keyboard and you don't want the cursor to move while you're using it. Very important if you're gaming. Now there is a lot of keyboard flex, a little too much for my liking, but the keys do feel very comfortable to type on, like super duper comfortable to type on. There's a nice click to it. There's good travel distance. If you're programming or typing a lot of documents all day, I think you're gonna enjoy the keyboard. There is backlighting behind here, but it's very hard to see, like just the edges of the keys light up. Now, one of the cool things about this laptop is this display. It's a matte finish, so you don't get those crazy reflections pounding off the display while you're working all day from bright lights, but it's a 16 by 10 display. It's a 14 inch 16 by 10 display, so you get some nice vertical space, but you can spec it with a 3K display, which is what I have here, 2880 by 1800, and it runs at 90 Hertz. So not only is it better for scrolling, but you could actually game on this and have a pretty decent gaming experience with the high refresh rate. It's super color accurate. The brightness is around 400 nits. So if you're using uh, this for some sort of design work, it's gonna be great, but watching content on this is superb. The webcam on top is only 720p. It's not the best, but at least it has one. But performance is what makes this thing special. Like for a light laptop this light and thin, it actually performs fairly well. It reminds me a lot of the Acer Swift X in a lot of ways. Like it's not gonna beat it out in, in multi-core speed just because the Acer Swift X has an AMD Ryzen processor so you get eight cores with it. So if you're doing like a lot of demanding tasks, it can handle it. If you're editing video, you're developing, it can kind of handle it. It's not the best at these things, but it's kind of like the jack of all trades, master of none. The RTX 3050, TI inside of here is more than capable. Like I was able to game on this as long as I was willing to drop the settings down to medium. But overall, like it performs well. 
Now in terms of fan noise, there's a few options. They have this little control center software they installed on here that lets you change it between a more quieter experience or you can go fans all out and get a very loud experience but get the best cooling possible on a package this thin. It is very conservative as it should be since this is a thin laptop and you know it never overheats, the CPU never gets too hot but I did find the keyboard area to get quite hot when this thing is under full load, especially around like the eight and nine key and the left side of the keyboard, it would start to get close to 60 degrees Celsius, which is a bit too hot if you're using it for a long period of time. Now internally, you can upgrade a lot of stuff. For example, you do have a swappable Wi-Fi card. You have two slots for RAM. Right now there is 16 gigabytes, two eight gigabyte sticks. They are rank eight. You can put up to 64 if you really want to. One PCIe 4.0 drive, which is pre-installed. This is a one terabyte drive, which gets really good read and write speeds. But you do have a second slot on the left-hand side that you can add more storage later on in the future. Now you do have a 52 watt hour battery. The battery life is okay, six hours and 30 minutes, which is not the best, but I guess since this is an H processor, it's gonna take a bit of a hit. And of course you have two fans, some copper in the middle to help keep the CPU and GPU cool. Now there are two speakers on the bottom and they're okay. They're nothing special, but they do the job. So here's the thing. There's always that one dude in my comment who's like, hey Matt, does this laptop run Linux? And the truth is most laptops can run Linux if you really want it to. It's just whether or not all the hardware inside is gonna work perfectly with it. When you buy this, you know straight out of the box it's gonna work with Ubuntu, Kubuntu, and Tuxedo's own OS. Is it gonna work with every distro on the planet? Probably not, but at least you have a nice base to work with. And the performance on this guy is actually really good. So if you ever wanted a Linux computer with a little bit more performance, this RTX 3050 Ti and the H-Series processor inside of here is gonna do the job for you. I hope that kind of settles things and if this is an interesting product for you, there'll be a link to it in the description down below. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.